Governor Abercrombie signed the Civil Unions Bill, SB 232, into law in February. What are your thoughts on this new act? I think it was about time. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, uh, it, it really was all about equality under the law and making sure that all of our citizens were treated equally under the law. And so I, you know, I, I think we were all very pleased that uh, we finally came of age, so to speak, and uh, did, did something to make sure that you know, all of our citizens can be treated with respect, with dignity. Uh, it was, a, it was a, an excellent and a proud day for Hawaii, and it was Act One. Yeah, uh, yeah, Act usually one. the legislative budget is Act One. This year it was like about Act Eight, so you know, we've been moving forward uh, other pieces of legislation, but I'm glad that that one was the first one. Yeah, I mean, we basically it's about you know civil rights for everyone, and um, in a in a big way, it's going to I think boost our tourism a little bit too. Absolutely, yeah. and help a lot of local businesses. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Is there any piece of legislation that is particularly important for you this session that you want to discuss? That's right. That's right. <laughs> well. You know, there's, there are two areas. We've talked a little bit about the uh, reorganization of the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, but the other one really is the foreclosure area, um, trying to make sure that we have a mechanism where people can get the information they need, they can get a face-to-face -face with their lender, and dialogue. You know, we've got measures moving in both the House and the Senate that would provide for a, a mandatory mediation. And we're going to put a short uh, moratorium into effect uh, to allow us to get the mediation program set up. Uh, we're also moving legislation that if you're in a non-judicial foreclosure and you stay in that system, you don't have to face a deficiency judgment. For some people who know that because of circumstances or whatever, they are ultimately going to lose their home, at least they don't have this you know, sort of Damocles hanging over their head saying, well, not only have you lost your home, but oh, by the way, you're going to still have to pay for it. So I think we're trying to work with our local lenders as well as folks like uh, FACE in our community to identify the kinds of strategies that will really help people through this very difficult time and, you know, cut their losses if they have to. but if they could benefit from a loan remodification, if they could benefit from some other kind of arrangement, we want to make sure that that option is available to them. Well, you know, I have a couple of bills. <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> Just a couple. Just a couple. Yeah. No, well, actually, you know, let, let me talk about this one first, which is one that I, I'm, I'm, the word is kanalua, the one that I'm, I'm you know, a little bit uneasy about, and it's undersea cable, mm. uh, the one that allows for the utility to set up this process, I think it's a bit premature. I mean, you know, it affects my district directly, Molokai, Lanai, and the people on these islands are very uncomfortable about this being mm -hmm. rushed through so quickly. And, you know, uh, to quote some of our colleagues, what's the rush? You know, <laughs> why are we rushing this through? Um, because they're trying to set up a regulatory process to put in an undersea cable to take power from Molokai and Lanai to Oahu. And, you know, in concept, I, I think that we need to do this for the whole state, but we also need to think it through very carefully. For instance, let the, the um, community dialogue process go through. Let the communities become more comfortable with it and understand it. And that's why I've been voting with reservations on these mm -hmm. bills. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm uncomfortable about it, and I think my district is uncomfortable mm -hmm. about it. Um, and then, of course, you know, there is the, the pregnant pause here. Uh, yeah, because, you know, I have, I have a couple of other bills. Uh, one is the, the medical marijuana dispensary bill. Um, and, uh, you know, people are a little bit um, maybe confused in what it does because it's allowing the 8,000 plus medical marijuana patients, that's all we're dealing with, to access medicine. So we're not saying we're going to legalize marijuana. We're not saying that it's open to everybody. Um, but when we passed the medical marijuana laws in 2000, was it? Yeah. Um, there was a big hole that was left is how do you get it? So we're trying to address that through the medical marijuana dispensaries bill. The other bill is one that, um, you know, is an economic issue really. It, it legalizes, uh, no, it decriminalizes, wrong word. Decriminalizes 
up to one ounce of marijuana, which means that it still remains illegal, but if you get caught with it, it's a fine, and the fine goes to our general fund. And after looking at the studies, um, we spend more money prosecuting, and by the end of the, at the end of the day, I think it was three, four percent of the cases actually end up with a fine. So this way, we actually will make some money and, <laughs> you know, um, unclog the court system. So. Uh, those bills are, are still moving in the House, and uh, you know we hope for the best for them. I suspect if we could find a way to tax all of the marijuana that's grown in our state, we wouldn't have a budget <laughs> deficit at all. Surplus. <laughs> We'd have a surplus. You know, I'm sorry, we're just about out of time. Are, are there any final thoughts that you want to bring up before we have to close? Well, you know, I'd just like to say that, you know, First of all, I want to thank all, all the different uh, our constituencies who have been contacting us with, with a number of different issues and, and concerns about many of the things that's happening at, at the legislature. Um, you know, obviously the House Bill 200, which is our state budget, that's like the 800 pound gorilla. And, um, you know, so the, you know, there, there are a lot of tough decisions that we're going to have to make in terms of trying to balance the budget. And, um, and so it's good to have a lot of input. Um, you know, people have been telling us, well, why don't you do this or consider doing something like that? And so we're definitely taking all of these different things into consideration. And, you know, hopefully at the end of the day, you know, we'll have something that, um, you know, is able to provide the adequate programs and services to our communities while, you know, being able to al also and allowing state to live within its means. So, you know, we're still really focused on the budget and the financial plan. That's probably, you know, job one for most of us. And, you know, actually, what I think this governor has discovered and some of us knew from last year is that we've really cut back and cut into so much of our programs, our ability to take care of our citizens that we can't do much more of that. We've got to look at what other kind of rev revenue generation is there out there that's possible. And we know that you know some of the proposals are not viewed very favorably. So we've got to kind of work through what we might be able to do, and I think that's where we're headed now. Thank you very much, Senators, for your time and expertise. We're just about out of time. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today, and aloha and mahalo. Thank you, Anna.